that hill up there is where Dick Turpin did his business all those years ago. But what brings us to this pleasant southeast London suburb is that house. Because that house is the home of Boy George's mammy and daddy. And I'm going in for a chat. But George, he was more artistic, you know what mm. I mean? Even as a youngster, he was more into art and music, you know, than sort of sports. What sort of things would he do? Well, he was, I mean, he was very good. Um, his best subject at school was art. He was very good, you know, drawing, things like that. Oh, a lot with colours. Creative. He's, I think he was always a bit creative when he was young. Does he still paint and draw? Uh, he does now. He, when he signs something, yes, if he's sending something to a fan, he puts a little drawing of herself on it, you know. So he's still. And he devised that makeup, that stage makeup that he wears himself. himself. Yeah, he's done it all himself, and he didn't get it off of me because I don't wear it. So he definitely I don't didn't know. get it off of me. <laughs> don't know. You know, I think it's just the fact that he wanted to be different right from an early age. He definitely didn't want jeans and a t shirt. But I think when he was quite young, Mark Bolan impressed him a lot. Mm. So Mark Bolan was very colourful. The T-Rex, man. T-Rex, yeah. And so George, I think, then he started sort of developing his own sort of style, you know what I mean? Mm. What are you by trade, uh, I'm a builder by trade. Uh, you know, just the average Irish trade, like we all go into the building, you know. Yeah, and, and the boys, the rest of the boys were, were... Gerald's in the building, David was in the building. But David's a uh, Kevin's in the it? building. Richard's in the building. Um, and now David's working for. And George, always different. Always yes. different. Yeah. yeah. Definitely yeah. wasn't going to be a builder. He knew that. He was what a makeup artist. Yeah. At first, yeah. He, no, at first, I think his first job was a messenger. He was a messenger by uptown. But he definitely, I don't. I think he always knew that he was going to be something. Do you know what I mean? I think he decided himself that he was going to be something big. But you know the way kids sort of say things like that and you think, oh, it's dreams, we've all got them. Except that he did folly it up. George is extremely successful now. He's one of the biggest things in the music business since the Beatles. Initially, when he started out, jumping around the stage in a lot of heavy makeup, and he's Jerry O'Dowd's young lad. I mean, how, how did you feel about that in those, at that time? Well, I think, no, I think it went back a little bit before that. Quite obviously, it's your job as a father. You, you try to obviously point your children in the correct, you know, the right, what you think is the right direction. Sure. You're not necessarily right, but, cause, but then again, you've never been a father before, so, you know, you're just doing your best, like your father, right? Or anybody's father. And initially, when he started dressing up, I reacted. You know, I'll be honest with you, I reacted. Um... But it, it became evident after a while that, you know, you just were not going to change, George. He, when you say you reacted, I mean, did you give him a, a, a clip in the ear? No, I, I didn't actually sort of clip him or anything like that. It, um, it's not one of the real things that we've had to do, you know. We usually sort of just use the verbals, you know. But... Um, David told me that you weren't past uh, delivering a clip in the ear when it was required. Oh, that's what, well, obviously, every father's, you know, you have to do that. You know, I mean, he only, he related that this morning, you know, and I'd still clip them in the ear, let's put it that way, you know, if, if, if they got too far out of line, I'd give them a backhand or, you know. Well, at the time, obviously, um, it wasn't so much dressing up, I've never really taken any notice of a youngster sort of dressing up because yeah. they all go through the peacock sort of uh, phase in their life. Um, but obviously, it's what you could call over the top at the time. I think it was, I came out and work and he had dyed his hair, wouldn't he? Yeah. And um, I, I read this, it's been quoted in some magazine or something somewhere, but you know, pure and simple, I just took one look at George and I just said, wash it out, you know, simple as that. You know, that was it. You know, and obviously Dinah, I think she ran around the shops to get something, like, you know. He couldn't wash it out, could he? He dyed it. But I didn't realise, you know, I just said, wash it out, you know. What did he do? He had to dye it back again? Yeah, we had to get dye it. Dye. We had to dye it brown, and then to get it black, we had to dye it brown and then black. But he, was, he wasn't he uh, was dark, he's sort of fairish. His natural colour is fair. But in actual time, I think since that, um, obviously that initial period, and the fact that it was obvious that no one was going to change him. 
Um, it's a fact that although he's different, you know, you've got the same love and affection for him as the rest of the children, right? Sure. And you begin to respect his right to do what he wants to do. You know, I mean, he wasn't hurting anybody, you know. He seems a very lovable character. He and, is, actually. And it's perhaps then easy to understand why small children and elderly ladies and an awful lot of people in between, they all loved by George. Yeah. I don't know if it's the music or the colours that attract the little ones. Do you know what I mean? The tiny sure. ones. But I mean, I've, you know, some of them are only two and three years old. Well, he's a big doll, isn't yeah. he? And I, mean, I think, it. you know, I think that initially it is with the little tinier ones, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? But I think the old people like him because he can actually sing. Nobody would argue that George is now a superstar. Has that affected the family in any way? No. I mean, obviously there's pride and, and, and so on, but it, has it caused any problems? No, not really, because um, I think what you've got to realise that George is the member of a, a fairly large family. I mean, here in England, it's not common. Uh, I mean, the average sort of family is one or two children. You know. There's six, you're six. There's six, mm. right? And obviously, my wife, Diana, comes from a very large family. I myself come from a large family. I think the, f the, f the fact that he has been brought up in, in this sort of um, environment uh, obviously has added to his talent. Because apart from being obviously a very good singer, George is also a very good wit. George has read a lot about people like Presley, the rock and roll era. I mean, those sort of people were really taken on, weren't they? They were used and abused. He's very clever, George, you know, as well. He's not, um, he may have a feminine look, as people call it, but he's all there. He's got all his marbles, you know. He comes from people that have got their feet firmly on the ground, that have got no illusions about life, no illusions whatsoever, you know. Um, and George realises that success you know, in a lot of respects, is an imposter. You know that, that we're all very normal people, and if success comes to us, it's a big 